Hey guys, I hope everyone's doing all right so far today. My name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors here at all of our campuses, all of our network churches, to each of you with us online. We are so glad that you are here with us. My hope and prayer is that God would just come and speak to every single one of us. If we're here and we need to be encouraged, that he'd encourage you. If you need to be challenged, that he would challenge you. If you need to be comforted, that he would He would comfort you. My, again, my hope and prayer is that God would come and speak to you right where you are. Before we get started today, I want to stop and celebrate. It's, it's important to stop and celebrate. A couple of weeks ago on Baptism Sunday, we had 71 people take the step and get baptized at all campuses. Can we put it up for that? This is 71 people stepping out in faith, 71 people saying yes to God, 71 people moving from, from death to life, 71 people just going public declaring, I am a follower of Jesus. Also kind of cool, uh, recently at one of our network churches in Madison, South Dakota, they had some baptisms there as well, ended up having three different people get baptized. And so network churches, we are so honored to be a part of what God is doing through your church and through your community. And we just excited about what God is up to right now. And friends, this right here is really a glimpse of the heartbeat of our church. If you're here and you're like, what is this church all about? Maybe you want to find out more. If that's you, next weekend, we are starting a new two-week series called Relentless. And I just want to invite you to come back for that. If you're, if you're, again, if you're newer and you're trying to find out more about the church, but also I just want to say this as strongly as I can. If Embrace is your home, if you call this church your home, please, please, please make it a priority to be here next Sunday in this series. We're going to be sharing about some of the big, exciting, faith-filled steps that we really feel like God is leading us to take. These are the biggest steps that we've ever taken in the history of our church. And again, just to stress this, if Embrace is your home, next week is almost like one of those important family meetings where we gather around the dinner table and talk about bigger things. And, and so again, we're, we're excited you're here. We just wanna invite you to come back again next weekend, all right? Today, though, we are in the fourth and final week in a series called deconstruct. And I'm actually sad about this series being over. There's so many more things that could be said about this. And just to quickly bring us up to speed on this series, depending on who you talk with about this word, deconstruct, you will get a very different response. I mean, there are some people who love this word and they love listening to podcasts about deconstructing your faith, while there are other people who think that it is evil, that it is wrong that it is from Satan himself, while also I know there's a whole bunch of us who are brand new to this idea, brand new to this word deconstruct. And so as we've done uh, each week, I just want to start by giving us a definition. Deconstruct means to take apart or examine something. Again, take, to take apart or examine something. And so it's, it's like this camera, this camera here, it's been deconstructed. It's been, it's been taken apart. And as a result, you're able to, to look at the own, like, individual specific parts that make up this camera. Well, when it comes to God, deconstructing our faith means to take apart and examine what we believe about Jesus, to take apart and examine what we believe about the Bible, to take apart and examine what we believe about our faith. Deconstruct means take apart and examine something. Now, as we've been saying, in itself, deconstructing our faith is not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about all the fake versions of Jesus that are out there. The private jet Jesus, the single issue Jesus, the Murica Jesus, the Instagram Jesus, the white Jesus, the social justice Jesus. These are all fake versions of Jesus that we've been told about, fake versions of Jesus that we have seen, and yet they are not the real thing. They are fake. And so if we follow a fake Jesus, or, or if we want nothing to do with God because of the fake version of Jesus that we have in our minds, we need to deconstruct these things. We need to take it apart and examine what's true and what's not true. What's, what's true about God and what's not true about God? And even last week, last week we talked about doubt and the fact that doubt is normal. Doubt is human. 
And actually doubt, it actually can be a blessing when it comes to our relationship with God. Just to say it again, deconstructing our faith, it is not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. But as we've been sharing, though, each week, I do want to make one important distinction. You see, it's one thing to deconstruct something, and it's another thing to destroy it. Again, it's one thing to deconstruct something, to take something apart, and it's another thing altogether to destroy it. These are two very different things. And so when it comes to God, it's one thing to take apart and examine what we believe about the Bible, to examine what we believe about Jesus. And it's another thing altogether to completely walk away from God and all that he is. Hear this, what can so easily happen is we start deconstructing our faith, which again, in itself is not good or bad, but then we go further and we experience church hurt. We're wronged by a Christian. We're, we're hurt by a pastor. And so we, we deconstruct and we, we take apart our faith some more. And then we have some doubts and questions about the Bible, about science, about whatever, which again, it can be a good thing, but instead of processing it with God, or instead of talking with our friend who loves Jesus, we, we start following a group of skeptics on Twitter. We, we start listening to our jaded coworker at work, and we stop going to church, and we, we deconstruct, we, we take apart our faith some more. And then life happens. We, we go through a divorce. We, we go through cancer. Something terrible happens. We have a, a miscarriage and we stop praying. And we deconstruct. We, we take apart our faith some more. And then our crazy uncle, he posts on Facebook. And one moment he posts about Jesus and how Jesus loves us. And then the very next second, he posts some crazy political rant. And if this is what Jesus is all about, I don't want anything to do with this Jesus. And so we take apart and we deconstruct our faith some more. And sometimes this process happens quickly. And other times it happens slowly over time. But hear this, what used to be our beliefs, what, what used to be our relationship with God, what, what used to be our faith is now just a bunch of pieces. It's just a bunch of, of pieces. Again, what used to be our faith is now in, 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 in shambles. Ever been here? And it's like, when it comes to God, I really don't know what I believe anymore. And mom and dad are asking me questions. It doesn't feel like you're going to church very much anymore. I don't even know what I, what I believe anymore, mom and dad. I don't even, I'm just confused. I don't, I don't know what I believe about Jesus. I don't know if I want to call myself a Christian again. What used to be our faith is now just a bunch of pieces. Okay, so if we're at this place, there are a couple of different options that we, we have. J just to acknowledge this first option, we can throw the pieces away. When it comes to our faith, we can just decide, we can just throw the pieces away. Honestly, it just feels like too much work. And when it comes to God and Christians, I'm just kind of tired and I'm jaded and I'm angry. And honestly, I just feel like it would just be easiest just to totally walk away from God altogether. We can throw away the pieces. Just to say it, I can't say this strongly enough. If this is you, know that we see you, we care about you, we, we love you. We're honored, so honored that you would even think about coming and checking out a, a service here. And if this is you, if you've already thrown away the pieces, our hope and prayer is that this is just a safe place for you just to be. And so again, we can throw away the pieces. That's the first option. Another option, we can try to put the pieces back together ourselves. We can try to put the pieces of our faith back together ourselves. Like one piece at a time, we can just start taking pieces and see what connects and what doesn't connect. See what we, what, what, what we like and what we dislike to see what works for us, what works for our, our relationships, our lifestyle, and what doesn't work for us. Like we can just see what works and what doesn't. We can try to put the pieces of our faith back together our, ourselves. That's the second option. Just so we know, though, there's an another option. 
there's another option. We can let Jesus put the pieces back together. We can let Jesus put the pieces back together. Now, I want to stick to to my word. At the start of this series, I promised that I wasn't going to push anybody. I wasn't going to challenge anybody. I wasn't going to try to convince you of anything. And that promise still stands, no questions. But but I, I do just want to share a few thoughts just for you to consider about these options. You see, with this first option, you can absolutely do this. There's, there's no judgment. You can most definitely cho- choose to throw away the pieces, but I'd, I'd suggest that if you do, you'll be left with, with nothing. You, you can do that. Again, I'd just argue, just from my viewpoint, that you'd be left with nothing. Like I know for myself, I just have these moments in life where I, I can't deny that there has to be something like when my, my kids were born and I was just like watching it, it was just like, I can't explain this. And earlier this year, when I sat with a young lady that I knew her life was coming to the very, very end and she would soon, very soon pass away. And on, on a weekly basis, when I see person after person after person walking by my house, struggling horribly with addiction and mental health, And even in myself, I just have these moments where I I see this longing in my soul for something greater than myself, these moments where even the greatest skeptic in me can't deny that there has to be something more. Again, you can absolutely decide to throw away the pieces, but just speaking for myself, it wouldn't explain this unexplainable longing that I have within my own soul. You can throw away the pieces, but it wouldn't explain this. It wouldn't satisfy this. It wouldn't answer this. And with the second option, the second option is is so popular right now, but just to say it, since the beginning of time, it's been so popular. Again, folks, there are very few things that that are truly new. With the second option, though, instead of throwing away all the pieces, we decide that we're going to try to put the pieces of our faith back together ourselves. And so we keep certain parts that we like, and we throw away the parts that we don't like. And we decide what makes sense and what doesn't make sense, and we, we pick and choose, and depending on what we experience or, or what we're going through in life, we change what we believe here, and we adjust how we see God over there. And just to acknowledge it, before some of us solid, long-time Jesus followers start getting proud and puffed up, and we start looking down at other people, to some degree, this is something we all do. Again, for that long, super, long time super Christian that's like, yeah, this world is picking, choosing what they believe about Jesus. Before we get to that, this is something you do as well. At least I do. And with this second option, though, it seems like a really good option. The only problem is when we're, when we're done putting our faith back together ourselves, when we're done, all we're left with is a Jesus that looks like us. Does that make sense? When we try to put the pieces of our faith back together on our own, what are we left with? We're left with a God that looks like us. Seriously, with the second option, we're the ones that get to write out God's plan for our lives. And we're the ones who get to speak on behalf of God. And we get to decide who God is and who he's not. And we get to decide and define who Jesus is. And I don't know about anybody else, that scares the crap out of me. Like, we're the ones that get to decide what's right and what's wrong. We're the ones who get to decide who Jesus is. I'll just speak for myself. I think I'll pass. This isn't including you. This is just for, for me. Just looking at some of the stupid things that I've done and said and thought about throughout life, I think I'll past. That, that, that's too fluffy. Just thinking about some of the stupid things that I've thought and said and done in the last seven days, I think I'll pass. I can't control my kids. I can't control myself. Your pastor, imperfect, irrational, changes every five seconds. 
I can't control me, much less try and, and create God. Once more, when we try to put the pieces of our faith back together on our own, we end up with a Jesus looks like us. What do we end up with? A fake Jesus. A, a, a fake Jesus. But again, though, there's another option. And today, I just want to invite you to consider it. Again, there's no pushing and shoving. I just want to invite you to consider it. The other option, we can let Jesus put the pieces back together. We can let Jesus put the pieces back together. At one point, Jesus is with his disciples. He's with his closest friends. And, and Thomas, the guy we talked about last week, is there. And just listen to what Thomas says to Jesus. Thomas said, Lord, we have no idea of where we're going, so how can we know the way? Just to stop here, does, does, doesn't this feel so spot on of what we're talking about today? Je Thomas is like, Jesus, we have no idea where we're going. Jesus, we have no idea how to put the pieces back together. Jesus, we have no idea, so, so how can we know the way? Jesus' response, Jesus told him, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Don't, don't, don't miss this. Jesus doesn't say, go out on your own, and you'll find a way. And he doesn't say, just try to put the pieces back together on your own, and you'll figure it out. He doesn't say, you get to decide the way either. Seriously, Jesus doesn't even show them a way. Instead, Jesus says, I am the way. Jesus, I have no idea. How can I know the way if, if, we, if we don't know how? Jesus doesn't show them a way. He says, I am the way. I am the way. And Jesus is like, you're trying to figure out what's true and what's not true. You're trying to, to deconstruct your faith. Good, that's so good. Why? Because I am the truth. You're, kind of, you're trying to deconstruct, deconstruct so popular right now. World, I'm so glad that you're deconstructing, that you're not just listening to what your parents said or what a pastor said. I'm so glad that you're deconstructing your faith because I am the truth is what Jesus is saying. And you're trying to figure out what will make you happy. You're just trying to figure out how to make your life just a little bit better. Jesus is like, I'm not gonna give you three steps to a better life. Instead, I am the life. I am the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen to this, my, my encouragement for us. Something to, to, to consider. In deconstructing your faith, don't construct a new Jesus. Again, if you're deconstructing your faith, if you're wrestling with things, that's good. It's not a bad thing. It's a healthy thing. It's an important thing. I think it's something we've all done since the beginning of time, if that's just my thoughts, though. But in deconstructing your faith, don't construct a new Jesus. Don't construct a new Jesus. You see, Jesus doesn't want us to throw away the pieces. And he also doesn't want us to try to construct and put our faith back together on our own either. Instead, Jesus says, I am the pieces. I am the pieces. Let me show you how this all goes together. Let me show you. Okay, so pastor, this sounds really, really, really nice. It sounds super nice. This is super fun and friendly, pastor. Thank you so much. I get so the answer is Jesus. Okay, okay, awesome. I'm gonna skip church today. Like the answer is Jesus. Sunday school answer is just follow Jesus. Pastor, I hate to be rude. I went to college. I don't know if you went to pa college, Pastor. I hate to be this way, but if it was that easy, and the answer is just Jesus, why are there 45,000 different denominations? Jesus. Okay, Pastor, again, I'm more of an educated, thoughtful person. Why are there over 45,000 different denominations that the answer is Jesus? By the way, if you didn't know, there are literally over 45,000 different denominations of Christianity. My response, have I ever mentioned how people screw things up? <laughs> Our track record is terrible as humans, okay? We mess it up over and over again. Now, I'm not gonna try to defend 45,000 different denominations, and I'm not gonna even try to answer how to fix 45,000 different denominations other than to pray Jesus come back soon. <laughs> 
but in our own lives, how can we let Jesus put the pieces of our faith back together? Not someone else's faith, but our own faith. How can we let Jesus put the pieces of our faith back together? How? Instead of picking and choosing and keeping what you personally prefer, instead of taking that one hurt that you experienced from that Christian or what that pastor said or what that church did and, and the horrible things that you went through, and instead of taking some spiritual thoughts that you saw on Instagram and, and, and you loved and, and, and what one specific church said over here and what one so-called expert said on a podcast, and instead of looking at people and walking away from Jesus because of people, instead of trying to be different from your parents, different from the, the other classmates of yours from your ignorant hometown, and Instead of running away from a fake Jesus in your life only to create another fake Jesus, instead of using all of this and trying to put the pieces of our faith back together on our own, my encouragement, go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. And that sounds too simple. I don't even like my own answer, but go to Jesus. Talk with Jesus. Don't just talk about Jesus. Talk with Jesus. Pray. Speak to him. We've been saying it over and over again throughout this series. Begin to open up a Bible and read about Jesus for yourself. See what he actually says firsthand. Seriously, so often, so many of us have many, many thoughts about Jesus and have opinions about Jesus. And I think Jesus is like this. And I think he's like, like that. And I think Jesus would never say that. And I think Jesus would never do that. Again, we have so many thoughts about Jesus, but few of us, few of us have actually seemed to open up our Bibles and read about Jesus firsthand. And so really, if you're, if you're wrestling with your faith, if you're deconstructing, my, 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 my challenge, spend even more time with Jesus, more time reading about him. Read, read the four books of the Bible, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Jesus, the, the four books that center on who Jesus is. In, in three weeks, we're actually going to be starting a series going through the book of Mark. Everyone will get a copy of Mark along with some, some thoughts. But the good news is we don't have to wait three weeks to start reading the Bible, hashtag the printing press. Also, the Bible is now free on our phones. And so seriously, just read one chapter a day. And before you do, just ask Jesus questions to say, who are you? Who are you, Jesus? And what are you like? Who are you? Pray that before you begin to read. Who are you and what are you like? I don't want the answer from some other person. I don't want to just believe what I was told and I couldn't ask questions because it's what our family believes. Instead, open up the Bible. Pray. Just say, Jesus, who are you? I want to hear from you. What are you like according to yourself? Again, go to Jesus, start following him. We said at the first week, you don't have to even believe in Jesus. Start following Jesus. Just start listening to what he says and start living the way that he does and get to know him firsthand. And we might not like this, but it's, it's Jesus who defines who Jesus is, not us. It's Jesus who defines who Jesus is, not us. Seriously, you don't have to agree with Jesus. You don't have to like Jesus. You don't have to be with Jesus, but you can't make your own version of Jesus. You, you can't. Hear this. This is for all of us, not just on one side of the aisle. If, if your Jesus is safe, if your Jesus validates all of your political views, if, he, if he's cool, if he affirms every part of your lifestyle and your decisions, genuinely, if Jesus never steps on your toes, if he never challenges you, that's a Jesus that you put together. Again, this is for all of us. I'm trying to step on everybody's toes. That's a Jesus you constructed. I constructed. Again, just speaking for myself, I don't want a Jesus that looks like me. And I don't want to be rude, but I don't want a Jesus that looks like you. I want a Jesus that looks like Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. 
Not a fake version of Jesus. I need Jesus. Seriously, on my own, I have no idea of how to put my faith back together. I can't construct an Ikea bookshelf, let alone try to build Jesus. Again, go to Jesus. Read about Jesus for yourself. Ask him, who are you? What are you like? You see, here's the deal. When we begin to talk with Jesus, when we begin to follow Jesus, when we begin to let Jesus put the pieces of our faith back together, we, well, what, what happens we begin to see that it's us, not Jesus, that needs to be put back together. This series is called Deconstruct, right? And deconstruct, it means to take apart or examine something. And we've been talking about how we, what we take apart and examine God, how we take apart and examine Jesus and what we believe. But hear this, when you start to really look at Jesus, when you start to see the real Jesus, you'll begin to realize that it isn't Jesus who needs to be deconstructed, it's us. It's you and me. We're the ones that need to be taken apart and examined. We're the ones who are broken, messed up, and totally confused. We're the ones that are in pieces, not Jesus. And just to share it today, if you are here and your faith is in pieces, or you've been trying to put the pieces of your faith back together on your own, or maybe your whole life is in pieces, just know we have a God who does not throw us away. He doesn't throw away us. He doesn't throw away parts of us. He's able to use the good, bad, and otherwise the, the broken pieces. He's able to use it all for good. He can use it all. And hear this, when Jesus deconstructs us, he does so only out of love for us. And he's so patient with us, and he's so, he's so gentle and kind with us. And just know we have a God Jesus, who can put the pieces of our faith and the pieces of our lives back together. He's able, he can, more than that, he wants to. He wants to. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we come before you so thankful for who you are, Thankful that you're an approachable God because of Jesus. We can, we can approach you. We can come near you. We're so thankful you're a God who can handle our questions and invites our questions, God. I'm so thankful you're, you're not like what, what we've maybe experienced in life where it's like you can't answer that, ask that question. You can't question the Bible. You're wrong. You're, you're broken. You're too messy. You're too disgusting to, to follow Jesus. You can't, you're, you're faithless. You're faithless. You can't do that. You can't have doubts. I'm so grateful you're a God who just welcomes us right where we are. Jesus, today, would you just come and speak to us? Who are you? What are you like? Would you help us to set aside our fake Jesuses? Instead of throwing away the pieces or trying to put it back together on our own, God, would you help us? Jesus, would you put the pieces back together? Because we want you. We don't want a Jesus that looks like us or somebody else. We want you, Jesus. We want you. Lord, we invite you into our lives. Would you take over every part of who we are? We invite you into our doubts, into our darkness, into our, our, our messiness. We invite you in, God. And from this day forward, we want to follow you. Even if we don't believe in you or we're here, we just, we're going to follow you. We're going to step out of our comfort zone from this day forward and follow you. Lord, we, we love you. We thank you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey everyone, it's Adam from Embrace. If you enjoyed today's message, make sure to subscribe to Embrace's YouTube channel to stay updated. You can also click here to check out other videos. Thanks for watching.